Tonight, a private investigator working for Donald Trump says he has information that could be a major revelation in the effort to disqualify prosecutors in the Georgia election interference case. According to the investigator, cell phone data shows that the lead prosecutor, Nathan Wade, made late night visits to the area where the DA, Fonnie Willis, lived in late 2021. This is important because both Wade and Willis claim their relationship only started in 2022 after Wade was already hired. When did your romantic relationship with Ms. Willis begin? 2022. There was no romantic relationship with Mr. Wade until early in 2022, whether it be January or February or March, early in 2022, correct? I would say sometime between February and April. Yes, sir. Now, Trump is arguing that if Wade and Willis were dating before she hired him to work on the case, then she personally profited should be disqualified and the case should be dismissed. Out front now, Nick Valencia is in Atlanta. Nick, uh, I wonder what more you're learning about what this private investigator says he uncovered in this case? Well, ultimately, just to be clear, the ultimate authority on this is going to be Judge Scott McAfee and what he allows to be admitted as evidence in this case. He's the gatekeeper on what happens next year, but he has some more information to go off of than he did just 24 hours ago. Steve Sadow, the defense attorney for Donald Trump in this case, suggests in his latest filing that he could prove that Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade were not entirely truthful about when their relationship began when they testified at her disqualification hearing last week. Sadow hired a criminal investigator who used subpoenaed cell phone data and cell phone information, which says that uh, Nathan Wade's cell phone was located in the vicinity of Fonnie Willis's condo on at least 35 occasions in 2021 during an 11-month period. Uh, the report goes on to suggest that Nathan Wade's cell phone was located there several times well into the late evening and early morning hours, and there was at least 12,000 interactions between Willis and Wade by phone. That's uh, text messages and cell phone uh, calls. So listen to, this is very interesting, because listen to what Nathan Wade had to say last week about this condo and his visits there during his testimony last week. Do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. So it would be less than 10 times? Yes, sir. So if phone records were to reflect that you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone records reflected that, yes, sir. They'd be wrong. They'd be wrong. So now in this filing, Sadow is basically saying that Wade was not telling the truth when he testified there. And just a moment ago, Jim, we got a new filing from the district attorney's office. They are forcefully pushing back on these claims. Not only do they say that this cell phone data is not relevant to this disqualification hearing, but more importantly, they say in this filing that it does not prove that Wade and Willis were in the same place at the same time. Ultimately, it is going to be uh, crucial what is admitted as evidence and the continuation to this disqualification hearing that continues next Friday at 1 p.m. Jim. Nick Valencia, thanks so much. Out front now, let's dig a little deeper. Ryan Goodman, our legal analyst and co-editor-in-chief of Just Security. And Stephanie Grisham, former Trump White House press secretary. Good to have you both on tonight. Uh, Ryan, if I could begin with you, and let's just uh, stipulate here, none of this affects the evidence against Trump and his alleged co-conspirators regarding election interference. This is about uh, a hearing regarding the, the disqualification or whether it is, would be justified to disqualify the DA or the lead prosecutor. But this new cell phone information, could it indicate potential perjury? And if so, would that be disqualifying? So the new information on the cell phone data, if it proved to be reliable and the judge found it reliable, mm -hmm then it could be devastating uh, to the prosecutors because it would basically go to their testimony in which they both said that their romantic relationship only began in 2022. This would contradict that, in which uh, Mr. Wade said that he did not spend the night at uh, the special prosecutor's, uh, sorry, the district attorney's uh, house or apartment. And the evidence here is not just that he entered into her neighborhood, but on one occasion, it says that she called him uh, late at night and then an hour, just about over an hour later, then he appeared at her apartment and was there for several hours. And the other one is that he leaves at like 3.30 in the morning and then he uh, texts her uh, after he returns home just about an hour later at 4 a.m. in the morning. So right. put those together, 
it's a deep concern and it could actually implicate whether or not they can proceed with the prosecution. So Stephanie, a private investigator hired by Trump's team, does this tell you something about how worried Trump is about this particular case and the evidence in this case? Oh, absolutely. I think this shows he's very, very worried about it. And, you know, I think that Fonnie Willis has shown to be a very strong woman who's not going to back down from him. And no matter what he says, I think that that intimidates him as well. I think this whole thing is un unfortunate. I don't know why they wouldn't have disclosed this relationship at the beginning. I think that if you're going to go against Donald Trump, you need to know that his team is going to dig and dig and try to find anything that they can. And whether or not he's above reproach, we can all talk about that at some other time, but they should be above reproach if they're going to go after him. So um, I think this is unfortunate. I've said all along, I do believe they should have, you know, stepped aside and let somebody else take the mm. case. But I guess we'll see what happens. Ryan, uh, do you believe the judge will allow this evidence in? And I wonder how relevant you think the Willis filing tonight saying that that data does not indicate what Trump's lawyers say it indicates. So I think the judge is probably going to let it in. It's really up to him and his discretion. But if he doesn't let it in, then we have this cloud that overhangs <laughs> the entire case and the trial and the like. So he might say, look, I'm even giving the, uh, the other side an opportunity to clear their names by letting it in. So I think that's one piece. But then, of course, they, that's exactly right, that they now get to, on the prosecutor's side, try to fend off this information and say whether or not they think it's accurate. Uh, for example, the idea that Mr. Wade visits her neighborhood 35 times over nine months, to me, that particular part of it is not very incriminating or concerning. There's a lot in that neighborhood. It's like a nine-mile radius. Uh, right. So it's the other part that's maybe more of the concern that they need to rebut. Understood. So, Stephanie, before we go, Trump, of course, has spent a lot of time disparaging Willis. Uh, he's posted about her on social media. He's called her names, claimed she's racist. Uh, Trump's made his vendetta against her very personal. And, and by the way, this is something we've seen in other cases, going after judges, clerks, you name it. What would it mean to Trump, uh, both, pol I mean, really largely politically, if she were to be disqualified? Well, no matter what, I think whether she was disqualified or not, I think this is going to be, you know, the perfect venue for him now to constantly talk about the fact that he's playing the victim, that, you know, everybody's against him. Um, you know, what he's doing right now, because as, as Ryan has said many times, like this, this has nothing to do with the evidence, but this is meant to humiliate them. This is meant to put a cloud, as, as Ryan just said, over the case. And so politically, I think he's already got a win here. No matter what happens, he gets to say that this whole process was corrupt. And no matter what anybody, and I believe no matter what Fonnie Willis and her team come back and say, even if they show proof that he was, I don't know, grocery shopping at 3 a.m. Um, in her neighborhood, I think that no matter what, the, the base and Republicans will just, just grab onto this and say, you know, the fix is in. Yeah, and, and, and again, we should note, does not affect the quite significant evidence of attempts to overturn the election in Georgia. Stephanie, Ryan, thanks so much to both of you.